Hello, my name is Ab Poster and I was asked by the International Horn Society to do a lesson or a video for the newsletter we have nowadays. And I thought it was a good idea, or it should be a good idea, to talk about some problems I see many times with my own students and also during master classes I give all over the world since many years. The first thing is the position of the hand in the bell of the instrument. The second problem I want to talk with you is how to breathe before a solo or when you play in a phrase and you have to breathe in this phrase how to solve the problem of breathing and have a very secure attack. The third thing is how I am doing my warming ups and I want to give you some exercises and do this with you uh, for this newsletter. So the first thing we will talk about is the position of the hand in the bell. It's a misunderstanding of a lot of students and players that when they put a hand like this with an angle in their hand that they get a dark and very beautiful sound. As a matter of fact, the sound will not have projection. So when you sit very near to the horn, it sounds very beautiful and nice. But as soon as you are farther away and you sit in the hall, you will hear that the sound is not projecting so well. So what is important that you open up the bell and you keep your hand straight. This is one of the most important things. So go into the bell till you feel resistance. You can have also contact with the horn with the back of your hand to the side. Keep it straight like you shake hands with somebody. Like this. And don't make the mistake that you turn around like this because then the tone will be very stuffy and will have no projection. The second point I should like to talk about is to how to breathe before a phrase. We know that the most correct notes are made by the first note you have to play. So when you hear, for example, Bruckner Force, everybody is afraid that the horn player will crack the note. And we have a lot of first note cracks in, in concerts. And I think this has to do with a wrong way of breathing. The way you have to breathe should be in the matrum, in tempo. So you can compare this when you throw a ball away. When you have a ball in your hand, there's no ball here, but you have to think there's a ball in my hand. I go back with my hand and throw the ball away. It's one movement. One, two. The same thing we have to do when we play the horn. When I have to play, for example, Bruckner number four, you know the tempo is about one, two, one. So it makes no sense to breathe already one and a half bar before. Then you would play one and you don't know how to attack. And that makes cracking a note very easily. So what you should do is to breathe in the tempo of the piece. So when you have to play Bruckner Force, you should play, you should breathe on the second beat. So when I, I count like this, one, two, one. So what you saw is that it's important that your body makes a reflex when you play the horn. When you take a breath too early, you have to wait for the note and you will crack it. When you do it in one movement, in the tempo of a piece, it is balanced, it's totally in balance and your whole system will have a reflex to do it right. It depends also on the tempo. So we did Bruckner 4, which is another tempo than other pieces. We can have the example, for example, um, Cosi van Tutte from Mozart. The tempo is 1, 2, 3, tam, tadim, pam, pim, pam, pam. In this case, we will take a breath on the 3. 1, 2, Feel that your 
body, your system is going to do it for you. You don't have to think about it when you play in this way. The third point of this very short lesson are my warming up exercises. You will find them on YouTube and the link you will find on this newsletter and on my website www.up-costa.de Best regards! Now I want to show you my warming up exercises. Warming up is one of the most important things uh, when you play the horn. And uh, it's so important that your lips and your embouchure are in a good shape before you really start playing concerts or playing a rehearsal or practice very difficult pieces. This exercise uh, takes about 25 minutes and you will play everything what you will need for horn playing. Low notes, lip trills, high notes, slurs and I build it up from uh, very easy till a little bit more uh, difficult. But try to do it every day and take this 25 minutes not only during your studies when you are at the university and, and you want to be a good horn player, but also when you are already a good horn player and you are an orchestra, try to do this your whole life long, so you keep, you keep more and more fit for many, many years. Thank you. The score you can find on my website, www.up-coster.de. You will find also the address below on this clip. And you can download it and we can go through it now uh, to every exercise I do. The first exercise is to make your embouchure very flexible. At the beginning of the day you feel it's all a little bit stiff and you want to make it flexible by playing not too high, not too low and uh, not too loud. So we start on the low C and we play trios and first slurred. Then we go up half a second every time. So we start on the C, now we play the C sharp. We go on till we arrive at the next C one octave higher. The next one is also exercise number one. It's the same exercise, but it's staccato, also not slurred. I'll give you an example. So we go on also half a second every time until we reach the C one octave higher. So we do the same exercise but then not slurred but staccato. We start on the C and open F horn. Then we go down every time half a second. And so on till we arrive on the G with one and three. Next one, which belongs also to exercise number two, is that we start again on the C, slurred, and make the same thing as in the beginning. And we start. Um, on 1 and 3 B flat horn with the same length as on the F horn uh, open. So we start 1 and 3 B flat horn and then we go up half a second every time and so on till we reach the F. Then the same thing we do with staccato. Until we reach the F. Next exercise. We start on the low C, not natural tone, so for every note we have another 12. Then we go up every time half of a second. And so on till we reach 
the high G. Exercise number four. There we play natural tones again. We start on the low C and we play every natural tone which is between the low C and the G2. <laughs> Then we go down on the F horn, half a second by pushing the second valve. And we do this till we reach the low G with 1 and 3. Exercise number 5 is an exercise which is based on scales. And we can exercise there our articulation. Play it all in mezzo forte and not too quick. We go on on D, E, F and G. Now we start with exercise number six. It's the same thing but we play in minor harmonic minor and slur. Again, minor and slurred. And we go on D, E, F and G, like it's written in the exercises. Number nine is to try to get a beautiful romantic sound in your exercises early in the morning with the warming ups. Exercise for the low register. It starts on G and we go down step by step with half secundas. Same thing, but slurred. Number 12 is a very nice exercise to get your lips in a very smooth condition. It's very relaxing, this exercise. And so on till you reach the C2. Number 13 is an exercise for slurs. Number 
starting is an exercise for the high register. Number 15 is an exercise for lip trills. We start on the F horn with the second valve and we play first quarters, then uh, eight notes, and then trios and sixteenths, and so on. And of course, all these tones are slurred. Mm -hmm. 